What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Once again, guys, hello. How you doing? Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. If you're new to my channel, if I can ask you to do me a huge favor, if you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys, it helps a lot. You have no clue how much that helps, and it's really appreciated. And in number two, my old G's, I know y'all love to help out. One thing you can do, you already know, smash that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Let's communicate with YouTube and let YouTube know that, hey, we talk, we discuss, we're back and forth with each other, and uh, yeah, push our content across the platform. All right, y'all, let's get into today's topic. So, a little bit of news. The Philadelphia Eagles have decided to finally interview someone for the open defensive back uh, position, coaching position. They decided to interview Dwayne Walker, who was the former defensive back coach in Cleveland, which, hey, Stylistically, there's some similarities to what we've been running with a slight alteration and a slight change. So I just wanted to come on today, make a, you know, a small little video, guys, not my normal dramatic long kind of really breaking down stuff, but just kind of talk in general about what this guy will bring to the Eagles if he is indeed brought in to be our defensive back coach. So let's talk about Dwayne Walker, guys. Jump into the topic. In this league, you're going to have injuries. Things are going to happen. So the more guys that are versatile, that really helps. The and out to me about Dwayne Walker coming in here and being the defensive back coach is he is pretty big about, you know, this issue of versatility. And in, in that conversation, guys, he's referring to basically what he's he's received out of Denzel Ward's production. Because this guy has, you know, had two young guys back to back that he's mentored and coached in Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams. And he talks about, you know, stylistically, these are two very different types of cornerbacks. Denzel Ward is this very versatile guy that can play inside, he can play outside. He's tough. He's, you know, got a hard nose. He plays up and press, but he's a smaller guy. While Gritty Williams is this guy that's really lengthy and long, and you know, he's he's more of the prototypical guy that most NFL teams are looking for. You know, and he does talk about this idea of, you know, developing young guys and you know, this whole nine minute thing that I watched on his press conference from uh, the preseason was really about, you know, this idea of how to grow young cornerbacks, which I thought was pretty Pretty impressive, and I, I think I know where the Eagles are going here. And I, I kind of like this interview a lot. Now, what I will say about him is this. I would be really excited to see him get his hands on players like Avante Maddox and Cravion LeBlanc, who are very versatile football players. He He's going to be a slight different stylistically from what we're used to. Now, it just depends on, on who's really calling the plays. I don't remember. Oh, no, no. He had Greg Williams his first... Yeah, Greg Williams the year prior is his defensive coordinator, and, and Greg Williams is a little different schematically. He's a man press kind of pressure package. And then he got St Steve Wilkes, who came in, and Steve Wilkes was more of a zone concept guy. But Steve Wilkes did kind of, you know, stay more man press because of the corners that they had there. So, you know, my thought press process is bringing this guy in is you're going to see a transition to a lot of man press. This would be an indication that the Eagles would be probably evolving more to a cover, you know, a cover one single high safety concept. Now, look, I'll roll the film for you and I'll show you guys. They love to play a lot of cover one. They played a lot of man press, single high safety man press. It's a concept we're not unfamiliar with, but we were generally speaking first down cover three and to third down cover one. But we're going to probably see the opposite of that with this guy. So let me just roll some film for you. I'll show you a game where they're in that cover one man press situation. And then we'll, I'll, I'll talk a little more in depth about what you're seeing. Seeing here is cover one, man press with that single high safety. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the Tennessee Titans formation, and I'll, and I'll walk you through what's going on here, okay? So the Tennessee Titans come out in a 12-man personnel package, meaning basically there's two tight ends on the field, two receivers on the field, and a running back on the field, okay? They have Marcus Mariota under center. They got Derrick Henry basically in that single back set deep, six to eight yards deep. He's standing in the end zone, basically. And then you have an unbalanced line with that tight end set. So it's unbalanced to the left side of the offensive formation. So two tight ends that are in line. Now, compile this all together, and what you get is basically those two wide receivers are going to be over on the field side. So the field side is the furthest distance between the hash marks and basically where the offensive center is basically to the sideline. And then your boundary is the closest from your center to the actual like sideline. So the two wide receivers are set up to that basically that 
that field side of the of the formation, guys. Now, let's take a look at some of the route progressions to the best I can see because these routes are highly disrupted by this particular defensive alignment here. What you get here is, is you get the wide receiver one to the one closest to the boundary side, who would be your X receiver, who's on the line of scrimmage. He's going to run what looks like to me to be like a fly route, maybe a kind of a go route concept. His angle is a little weird there. He's not really running a seam route, but he is he's basically running a vertical route, guys. And then your second wide receiver looks like to me he's running like kind of a, a comeback or, or a hook route, that kind of ordeal. He's coming back towards the quarterback. Now you have two tight ends. So your first tight end is essentially going to run what's going to be a short drag route. So he's going to come kind of come across the offense. It could be a drag route. It could just be an, an in route that just keeps developing and keeps going because he sees Mariota roll out. But drag, in route, you guys get the concept. He's coming across the offensive formation. And then your second wide receiver, or I'm sorry, your second tight end, my bad, guys. He's running something that's really hard to see because his he really gets disrupted because he's staying in kind of as a chip blocker, and that really ties him up. It looks like to me he's, he's either running a deeper in route or he's running a post, but his, the angle and the trajectory just really gets disrupted on this play, so it's incredibly difficult to tell given the state of this. Now they hit him with a little play action, and then Derrick Henry is going to basically be your flats receiver, but... One of the linebackers is supposed to pick um, Derrick Henry up, but actually defensive end just really disrupts him in the backfield, just puts the hit on him since it was a play-action pass. So you got a highly disruptive, you know, kind of formation coming out here. First handle, play-action, little bootleg in the end zone being shot. Now let's take a look at what the Cleveland Browns are doing, guys. So let's, let's transition and let's talk about what we see from Cleveland. To begin with, guys, they're in cover one, man press. So let's start with, this is a single high safety concept, and I'll show you that. Now, with this cover one man press concept, you have a built-in quarterback spy. All right, so your first linebacker, you can kind of see, he's kind of in between the two middle hash marks there. He's spying on the quarterback. The second linebacker, who's kind of on the defensive right hash, he's basically picking up that, that running back. It's his responsibility in that man coverage concept, guys. Your third linebacker is on one of the tight ends. It's number 52. He's on the tight end that's closer to the formation, in that inline. And then you have number 35, which I'm assuming is either a safety or a nickel corner. He is lined up on the second tight end, the tight end furthest outside of the formation. Now, if you go back over to the defensive left, offensive right, where the two wide receiver sets are, you can see you clearly have two cornerbacks and a man press concept. This is what you're going to get from this defensive coordinator, guys. We're going to see a lot of this from Dwayne, from Dwayne Walker. He plays a lot of cover one man press. So where the Eagles played a lot of first down cover three, he seems to play a lot more cover one man press concept and, and first down. So I don't know, you know, how Jim Schwartz would fit that if he ends up becoming our hire. It could be kind of interesting to see how we do this. The one thing I will say is it would be nice to have an actual identity just because I do think sometimes like we got a little too weird with things and, you know, we got guys who are more zone, you know, corners. We got other guys who are more man corners, and we're trying to play both. And, and it just we were just out of alignment the whole year, guys. So I'm excited to see what he could do with this type of, you know, particular setup here. Now, I do want to kind of transition here, guys. I'm going to show you another video clip. And I'm going to show you the way that they ran their defense, which is a lot of trickery, a lot of movement. And I'll show you a really good example of this from the coverage standpoint of being trickery and movement. This is a, uh, a very sneaky and clever coverage scheme being disguised here by Cleveland. It doesn't work because they have a very good call, play call for this. But what, and it, what, what you see happening here, guys, if you look through it, you get three down linemen, right? So you got three down linemen, you got three guys in the Joker, you know, kind of stand up rushing position. And then if you, if you look closely, the first pre snap read they give you is cover one you know, man press concept, right? A cover one man press concept with a single high safety. But as soon as the ball gets hiked, what you'll notice is, take a look at those three jokers. Number 53, the linebacker that's to the defensive right, offensive left, he's covering the running back. Number 51 is covering the quarterback. He's a, he's a quarterback spy there. And then you get number 23, who's lined up like he's going to rush, but he drops back and shoots down that seam. And what's he doing? He's getting over the top. This is a actual cover seven, which is known as cover two man press, which is really known as cover seven. 
but it's a cover two man press concept that they were disguising. You'll see number 29 shifts and gets outside of the hash marks real quick, and then number 23 comes flying out and covers that back area. He's got the other side of the, uh, you know, the deep area of that deep zone. So very clever, very well disguised kind of play here that, that they put together. Uh, something that I think might have been a little too cute, but look, the Eagles are very familiar with using Joker stand up, you know, rushers. And, and I'll be honest with you, we probably could use a wrinkle or two like this to give us some disguises because I do think we lack that at times. We're not, we're, we're somewhat pretty predictable pre and post snap. Quickly, because there are just athletes everywhere. Speaking of athletes, like to round up my thoughts on this particular interview and this particular, you know, defensive back coach and, and his style, look. I like the guy. I like him. I, I don't know what his, you know, actual probability is of being hired. He came from a very good pass defense. You know, one thing we can say about Cleveland was is they were a very good pass defense. He has experience developing young cornerbacks. I, I think all these things are pluses. I mean, little mishmash with the style. I think we're looking more of a uh, Seattle cover three concept guy, so more of a, a Chris Rashard type. But to be honest, that they can find a way of working out this, you know, schematic differences here. I, I like what he offers. I mean, clearly if he comes in, we're going to see more, we're going to see more man press concepts. We'll probably see more, you know, pre and post snap mixes to where we're not being so predictable pre and post snap. We would probably definitely see a little bit of, of a, uh, a changing of the guard because the Eagles would have to figure out how they're going to play first down. I don't think the Eagles are, are going to be a, a really great cover one run defense. That's that's why we play so much cover three. Primarily, teams are going to run on first down if they're going to run. And playing cover three allows you to play what's called a fast flow defense. So your linebackers are flowing to the running back before they start going into their, their zones. So it's fast flow. So I, we'd have, you know, there, there are some concerns there. There's some things we kind of got to mash together, figure out. But I love the way this guy has developed corners. You know, I love the fact that he mixes up coverages and he doesn't give you the same pre and post snap read. I personally think we have the the personnel that fits a man concept more than it does a zone concept. I mean, if you're going zone concept, then you're looking at guys like, you know, Russell Douglas, who needs to be a part of this football team. If you're going man concept, then you're looking at guys more like Sidney Jones. We'll see. I mean, a lot still has to happen here. I do like the guy. I wouldn't be surprised if we also don't see Chris Rashard get interviewed. But I guess we'll, we'll see what happens, guys. It's a long ways away. All right, y'all. That's the content for the day. I hope this was insightful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look, I really like what Dwayne Walker brings. I think this is going to be a, you know, a fascinating interview. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here. Y'all know what time it is. E-A-E-L-E-S. Hey, we're on the steam of the secondary, so... I started off by doing first, I talked about free agent cornerbacks. I covered the cornerback search now. What do you think I might do next? I'm probably going to head towards the draft, guys, and talk about the available corners inside the NFL draft this year. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here, guys.